and welcome. <laughs> we are here. We are live. I am Jeremy Reed. This is. The I am people. Justin Guthrie. That's right. And um, we are here to talk about how to lose the final ten pounds, which is a very common thing. I, I know that, we, like Jessica and I talked before the show, and. Um, as we were deciding on show topics, we both get asked this question all the time. It seems like the final 10 pounds is the hardest for a lot of people to lose. Would you agree, Jessica? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there are physiological reasons why it's hard. It's not just a mental battle, but there's certain things that you need to change to be able to do it. So you can't just keep doing the same thing you always did to lose all the pounds before that. There's actual strategies you can use to make it go faster and easier and actually happen because a lot of people get stuck there for a really long time. Yeah, yeah, that's a common sticking point um, for sure. And and for some people, it's even, you know, maybe even more. I've seen like people say, oh, they lost 30, 40, 50 pounds, but they're, you know, 10 or 15 pounds from their goal and their body is just not moving. And it's a really common yeah common area to be in for sure um so let's and jump right into it oh, go ahead pounds, like for some people just two pounds and they're not happy with it you know so in order to get you guys to your exact goal you know we want to offer some tips to help you for sure why don't you jump right in with your your first tip jessica yeah so um i'm trying to think what we should start with um we had a really good talk like he said before the call about like you know, what are my favorite tips and what are his? And like, we agreed on it. We always agree on everything, which yeah. is great. But um, I think for both of us, like the number one workout tip was that you've got to change things up. If you keep doing the same workouts that you were doing, like say you started a hundred pounds overweight and you're doing really like you're doing the same workout and you're having great success and you're like 80 pounds down and then you just get to that sticking point and you keep doing the thing that got you 80 pounds down you may, you know, stay at that plateau until you change things up. So the number one thing is change your workout routine. Yeah, our bodies yeah, have our a, bodies have a, a, a amazing ability a, to amazing ability to. Are you getting an echo? Are you getting an echo? Uh, no, I think it oh. sounds okay to me. Okay. Oh. Um, our bodies have an amazing ability to um, really adapt to what we're doing, and so um, you know, it's like runners. I see this a lot in running as well. When somebody like goes and tries to do like the couch to 5k or something and they, you know, they haven't really done any sort of exercise and all of a sudden they start running, their body responds really well. And even running a mile is a challenge for them and, and they'll start to lose weight. They'll start to, you know, all of this stuff, but even just, even just a, a week into it, two weeks into it, three weeks into it, their body gets much more efficient much more at that, efficient. Uh, at that running, you know, and, and before you know it, Running doesn't really provide the same results that it did when they were when they were first starting, and our bodies have the ability to yeah. do this for a lot of different things. And so, the the number one kind of tip that we were talking about is changing it up, but but even more specifically, changing up the intensity of what you're doing can have yeah. a dramatic effect of uh, of your results. And so, switching from a steady state cardio, even though steady steady state cardio might have provided 80 pounds of weight loss for you. Changing that over to like high intensity intervals or, you know, sprints or, you know, it could be on any sort of equipment or any, any area you want, but increasing the intensity to where you are sucking wind, as Jessica likes to say, can make a huge, huge difference, not only in your calories burned in the moment, but I've done um, tests with my clients as well on looking at their, their 24 hour calorie burn, regardless of how accurate those things are, um, you know, looking at their 24 hour graft calorie burn for the day um, on the difference between steady state cardio days and high intensity cardio days. And it's dramatically different on the steady yeah. state days. You get this, you know, you get this spike in exercise and then it kind of teeters down and it's pretty much, I mean, slightly elevated, but pretty much at the level that it was prior to exercise on their high intensity days. It is jacked way up and it stays way up for pretty much yeah. the rest of the day. And so it really goes to show you that, um, the intensity at which we bring to our exercise can make a huge difference. And then also, I mean, chemically, it's very different in our body as well. So, um, you know, changing up the intensity of your workouts, big, big, you know, huge tip that we'd give for you right now. Jessica, what's your, like, what is your go-to, let's, let's say cardio for right now. What's your go-to kind of cardio recommendation for people? 
Um, I love, I especially recommend this to women, but of course it can work for guys too. But the stair mill is like one of my all time favorites. And I think the reason I especially like it for women is because most women want a really nice butt. I mean, guys should have one too, but right. <laughs> for, for women, it's like a total priority to shape and tone their butt. Um, at the same time as losing fat, right? So I think the stair mill is like one of the most excellent cardio machines um, created because you get that full extension when you raise your knee up to the level of your hip or so, you know, you're getting an extension of your glute muscle and then you're pressing down, which is flexing your glute. So it's much different than like, say, running on the treadmill where you really never get that full extension or the stretch of the glute. So um, for me, that's like one of my go-tos. Um, I also really recommend, especially for guys, doing outdoor sprints. And it really does make a difference between being outdoor and indoor. Um, just because I know, like on a previous blog, we talked about there's a different kind of traction with your feet on the ground versus on a treadmill. And then also, um, I just think that you'll, you know, the treadmill is a set speed. So a lot of treadmills only go up to 12 or 15 miles per hour. But outdoors, you can reach whatever speed you can reach. So I think, you know, so I think it's truer to what the, you know, candidate can, can actually not do. do. So, so you know, my sprint's you know, not going to be as fast as your sprint probably, but we'll both be doing 100% of our own maximum, you know, versus if we're both doing 12.0 on a treadmill, it's just 12.0, you know? Right, right. I, so I, that's my number one for yeah, now. If yeah, for males and females, but you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm getting some I'm weird getting audio stuff audio on my side. Oh, Is no. it all good for you? Yeah, I think it sounds fine, but <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, oh, um Belfair said Do that you can hear my echo. Do you think it's okay? I don't I don't know. How now is it, it sounding to, to everyone else? Yeah. Yeah, if if you're hearing anything weird, just uh write in the message box and let us know. Um it, it I Anyway, yeah, no, absolutely. And the 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 stair mill is almost like this one-legged squat yeah. or partial one-legged squat for every step you're taking. And that's why, I mean, if if any of you have ever been on a stair mill, you know the difference. It kicks your butt big time. Like yeah, some people that are that are you know cardio junkies on any other piece of equipment can get on a stair mill and 10, 15 minutes in, they're dying. Um, mm -hmm. It it is a a very um, yeah, Belfair, for sure. I, I mean, I, I know it's not just us. There's a lot of blabs out there that are having issues lately. So, um, yeah. but whatever we can do to, you know, sometimes just a refresh helps. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's my, uh, my number one, the stair mill or the stair stepper are my two kind of top, um, preferred cardio methods and the, the glute and hamstring activation for that is tremendous as well. So I definitely recommend that, but there's all sorts of other things too. Like I will regularly throw, um, body weight, uh, circuits at my clients just to change it up and have them, you know, doing everything from burpees to step ups to, yeah. you know, lunge jumps, jump squats, and just make like a, you know, either as many reps as possible in a certain amount of time or a certain amount of reps and just keep going, going, going with a short break. And uh, again, yeah, same that's, that's effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the same effect as what we're talking about. Get your heart yeah. rate up, shock your body, work your body in a way that it is not used to being worked. And you'll see that this simple act can get your body crushing through that last 10 pounds without a doubt. Totally. And you know what's the other benefit of doing like what you said, kind of a body weight circuit, is you're using your arms, your chest, your back, your abs, like all these other muscles that if you're just doing the stair mill every time, you're really just working your legs mostly. So I think, you know, variety is key. Even if we have a favorite or two, um, you know, we don't like try to box ourselves into just only doing or recommending one type. Like I really make sure that my clients are doing multiple types and they don't always stick to the same thing. Like every one of my clients will tell you that every she every session they've had with me is different than the last one. Like we've never had yeah. two repeat sessions. That's awesome. And it, I'm sure it keeps them wanting to come back for more too because yeah. they, they don't know what yeah, you're going to throw at them. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You know, mentally, if you know what to expect. It's like, I hate to hate on this, but like, Bikram yoga was like that for me. The second time I went to Bikram yoga, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the same routine with the same even set of words and everything. I was like, I just can't get excited about that because I know exactly what I'm going to go through. You know, I think fitness is much more fun when every day is a surprise and everything is unique. 
And it's also good for your body and your mind to be challenged in new and different ways. For sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And with that in mind, now you have a program available, right? A digital program available for anyone? Totally. Yeah. So, you know, Brad, my husband's name is Brad and we both together do Live Lean TV. It's liveleantv.com or you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash liveleantv. And um, our whole business is wrapped around the idea of people who are really looking to lose that last 10 pounds. That's like our specific uh, customer type. Um, so not to say that we don't work with people who are, you know, in the obese category or in different categories. You know, we have clients of all types, but I'd say our main client is struggling with that last 10 pounds. So it's really become our specialty. And, um, and it's not just about losing that 10 pounds, but it's about teaching how, you how to lose it and keep it off forever. You know, that's really yeah. our main mission in this world is like teaching people how to keep it off. And what um, would you yeah, say is your, your number one product like um, yeah. for that, that you would pimp out? Yeah, um, I love our product, Live Lean Afterburn, because this one, it's kind of like what you were saying at the beginning of this blab. Um, when you said that you've tested with clients and you've seen the difference in their EPOC and EPOC is the post exercise oxygen consumption. It means um, basically that your body has to recover harder, meaning you're burning more calories all day long and you're getting much more of like an extended effect from your exercise versus like what Jeremy was saying, when you do steady state, after you're done, you pretty much return to standard. Um, but when you're done with a high intensity workout, you're continuing to burn all day long. So that's what the afterburn is really about. So our Very program, cool. I'm going to put it in the link down here below. If you go to liveleanafterburn.com, amazing program. I mean, just all you have to do is look at the testimonials and you'll be like, damn, this works, you know, and I'm not going to say it's an easy program. Of course, it's going to kick your ass, but it does it in the right way, like in a smart way, strategic increasing you know your um your level of difficulty week after week to get you to that peak level of fitness that's awesome that's great and it's fun and then let's uh let's talk about nutritional changes that you'd recommend as well because i know that you know we've we've discussed many times on different blabs of the importance of nutrition and so um yes. you know i know that's gonna that's gonna come into play as well what do you uh what would be i guess your number one nutritional change trying to drop the last 10 pounds yeah, absolutely. Like we talked about earlier, it was, um, I mentioned education, I think is my number one thing when it comes to clients who are just stuck in a stuck place. I'm like, do you know how many calories you're eating? Do you know how many carbohydrates you're consuming per day? And if the answer is no to all of these questions, then it's like, okay, it's time for you to find out. And then you can make educated changes instead of just going on some random, you know, lemon water diet or something like that. You can make strategic changes to your diet that are, are really going to make a difference and in a sustainable way. So yeah. education, you got to know how much you're consuming and how much you should be consuming. Right. And that's something, I mean, I'm sure you see, because I see it so much, I'm sure you see it a ton too, is the average person's like, they don't know what they're taking in. They yeah. just know they want, they want, they want to get from point A to point B. And so they're like, well, I need to change my diet. And then you end up talking to them and they end up making these either, most of the time it's this drastic, drastic change. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, you're doing more harm than good here. And you know, whether it's just dehydrating themselves or starving themselves or going on some sort of cleanse, or, you know, it's like, yep. this isn't the example, you know, this isn't, isn't what we're going for anyway. And, and a lot of times, um, I'm getting that stupid, getting that stupid echo, echo game. game. <laughs> oh no, it's not so bad for my end, but. Okay. okay. Um, um, but essentially what they're doing is they're doing it in, 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 in an unsustainable way. way. Mm -hmm. That is not going to provide the results. Result. In many cases, they're going to yeah. gain it all back the second they go off of the juice cleanse or off of the lemon water <laughs> root grass diet. And it's like, God, we've got to change our lifestyle. And that's something else you and I talked about on the phone was changing our lifestyle, which we'll get into more of that later. But it's like we have to understand what we're what we're currently consuming in order to make the, the changes in order to get to our goals. I mean, and that's what, a big one. And, and what you were consuming to get you into the unhappy place, right? I think sometimes reflecting on how did I even get here is a really important step for people looking to get away from there, you know, because 
if you don't know how you got there, then you're you you know more likely to slip back accidentally because you just don't know how it happened. So I think really being aware of how that happens in the first place. How does the human body gain fat? You know, how does the human body lose fat? You know, these are things that I think our society as a whole are just kind of ignorant to, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Big so time. And, 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 and that, that applies to no matter where you are in your journey. Yeah. Even if you have 100 pounds to lose, how did you get there? Like, you know, in, in some cases, it, it's kind of pretty obvious. But when we start to look at our habits and we look at our lifestyle, it's good to identify these areas where you're lacking, really. Like, where are your, you know, where are your weak points? Is it the the partying that you're doing every Friday and Saturday? Is it the binge eating that you're doing three, four nights a week? You know, is it that you're not preparing your meals and that you're just, you have no self-control when it comes to going out to eat and you're always ordering the triple cheeseburger? You know, where are the areas in your life that are, are getting you to where you don't want to be? That's a great point. Um, and it doesn't mean you can never have those things again. I mean, we've talked about this before, but uh, you don't have to give up alcohol forever. You don't have to give up right. cheeseburgers forever. Right. If Jeremy and I got together, we'd probably have a cheeseburger and a beer together if I wasn't <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we would have like three triple cheeseburgers and 10 beers. You know, there's a limit. Like we can't, we understand that enough is enough. And, you know, we've trained ourselves not to overindulge. And it's okay to indulge, but just not to overindulge. I think that's a very fine, fine line with clients who are confused on on the whole weight loss process. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, it, it's also confusing in today's day and age where people are browsing Instagram, Instagram or Facebook. Or Facebook. And, and people, there's a lot of fit fitness people out there who just post the cheat meals that they eat. Yeah, like they only post the cheat meal or only the clean meals. I've seen some are like all perfectly clean. And you're like, I know yeah. that's not what that person's eating. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so, and so you know, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of deceiving on both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I know that you're not you like that. You like that because what someone's posting is not the whole picture. So, unfortunately, like it's a very skewed view of what's really going on because, you know, you don't know when you look at someone from the outside what they're doing behind closed doors. You have no idea. And that person who just pounded that double cheeseburger might be doing burpees all night that night. And then the person who just had the, you know, banana kale smoothie might be pounding a double cheeseburger that night, you know? So you just don't, you don't know the reality of things. And it's really important not to compare yourself or your dieting habits to others and just really make your diet your own and take personal responsibility of it instead of just following what, what works for someone else. Exactly. Um, but, but I know that it's a real thing that a people come to me or sharing, sharing you know, some, some fitness, fitness person's Instagram, Instagram account, account with me going, yeah. look at all this crap they're able to eat and get to their goals. And I'm like, <laughs> come on, you cannot sit here and, and show me a couple posts from some fit chick and tell me that that's what she lives off of. Like, you know, okay, she posted that she eats a donut, but you're wanting to eat donuts every single morning. Yeah, <laughs> she probably had right? to like, Yeah. Right. And that's why she's posting about it because yeah. it was such a glorious event, you know. And <laughs> Because it was like so crazy. It's like. Right, <laughs> and like hashtag if it fits your macros, and my clients are like, "Hey, if she's able to do it, I should do it," you know. And uh, it's just like, "Oh, come on." And um, her whole backstory, you don't know. I mean, I I don't know if you've ever met anyone, Jeremy, that has a metabolic disorder where they burn like five to eight thousand calories a day. Like that person does exist. They're out there. There are people whose metabolisms run too fast. And so you can't look at that skinny person and be like, oh, that skinny person can eat whatever they want and get away with it. Why can't I? They have a metabolic disorder. Like, they don't like it right. that way. It's like I've, I've had a, a client before who, you know, would start to get lightheaded and dizzy and stuff if she didn't eat every hour. I mean, that's that's challenging. Crazy. Imagine how much money she has to spend on food. It's not a position you'd want, you know? So. Yeah. I had a um, I had a client as well that um, it was a very weird client because she had an extremely fast metabolism. Yeah, but she also suffered from some mild um, anorexia. Oh wow! Which was a well, she had she was recovering or whatever. She didn't have the problem when she was working with me, but she was coming from it. So there was this weird hesitation to eat too much, yet 
all of the symptoms of like low blood sugar and all this stuff were happening because I mean, I had her on, I think something like 4,000, 4,200 calories for, a, and she was like 105 pounds. This is a female. I mean, a female, it was crazy. And she's still like, yeah, I just, I'm really nervous to go to four, you know, or like 4,500 calories. And I'm like, totally. don't be nervous. You need it. Yeah. <laughs> You're practically passing out at the gym. Like, you know, you've got to eat. And so, um, you know, we, we started out like, like several cheat meals a week and just trying to get the calories in her. Cause she was, wow. it was not a good situation, Wait, but are they are out there. It's yeah. That's not the average client, but you know, it, it, no. it does happen. So I just don't want people to think that it's one thing works for everybody or there's one way for everybody. I know when I first got into fitness, the whole talk was 12 to 1500 calories for weight loss for everybody and anybody. And I still hear this from clients. Like I had a client ask me yesterday if he should be eating 1500 calories a day. And he's a six foot four, 200 pound dude. And I was like, Oh my God, no, you will die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It, it, it's some people, I mean, it's so just, and there's so much crap knowledge, crap yeah. information out there that if you're just the average person going through blog posts or bodybuilding.com forums or whatever, it's like you, chances are you're going to go in 500 wrong directions before you find a post that actually gives some good information. Yeah. I highly recommend going with somebody that's knowledgeable and credentialed and, and in this, you know, <laughs> in this industry and just work with them, like spend the money and work with them. I mean, Jessica posted a link to her, um, to her program, yeah. which I guarantee is phenomenal. She's got plenty of, of, um, testimonials and stuff on it. You know, I have testimonials up the butt. I'll paste in a link to, um, a product I have called, um, my final 10 ebook, which is, it's, it's a, a book that I wrote, you know, a year and a half ago on this exact topic, because we get asked this question all the time yeah. and it's a lot of the tips and some more of what we're going to cover today. And so there are resources out there for, Finding the right way to get to your goals without, you know, being a six foot tall man eating 1200 calories a day or being a woman that thinks you just have to starve yourself and do hours of cardio in order to get to your goal. Yeah. You know, there are resources out there. So invest in yourself <laughs> is, is, a, is a good thing. Um, you know, when it comes to nutrition, a lot of times what I've found um, that can make some immediate results is, and you had mentioned, you know, talking about your carbohydrate intake and knowing what you're consuming, knowing what you're taking in. Yeah. Once you have that all figured out and you know your needs, um, I've found great success with most people. I mean, obviously there are um, those people out there that have, they, their needs are more than others. But for a lot of people, taking your starchier carbs, your, you know, your oats, your sweet potatoes, your rice, all this stuff, and placing essentially surrounding that around your workout. And so what this is going to do is uh, give you the energy you need for your workout, give you the recovery you need um, post-workout, but then the rest of the day sticking to um, a, a higher protein, higher fat and vegetable um, diet has shown a lot of great uh, results for my clients uh, as well. And so what this does is keeps your um, blood glucose levels down during the day when you're not as active, most of us are at work and we're sitting in a desk or whatever. And so you're, you're allowing your body to be more in a fat burning mode throughout the day, but then still getting the benefits of fueling your body correctly for your workout, fueling your recovery post-workout and restoring those gly uh, glycogen stores for energy for the rest of the day. And it's been a really, really good um, technique, I guess you could say for um, and they call that nutrient timing, you know, essentially feeding your body what it needs, when it needs. Um, it's been a great technique that's provided a lot of great results for my clients for sure. Yeah. And even for beginners who are just starting out and just like, I really encourage people to just make one change at a time, you know? So if you feel like it's too much, too overwhelming to only have, um, starches here and don't have any starches later, if you could just change one meal, I would suggest the most important one being the dinner. And there's this myth out here about like carbs after six make you fat or something. I'm sure you've heard that, right, Jeremy? You get that question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it okay to eat carbs after 6 p.m.? And I myself used to believe that. I used to have myself on a strict no carbs after six rule. But um, honestly, that's not really what it's about. It's about don't give yourself starchy carbs when you're going to be your most sedentary. 
And that's around the time when people sit down on the couch, watch TV, click through channels, and don't really move their muscles at all. So if that's, you know, depending on your personal schedule, because I have other clients who work until midnight or work until 1 a.m. and they're on a completely different schedule. So for them, that same rule doesn't apply. But I would say for the general public, people who uh, finish their job at five or six and then just come home and sit down, that's when, you know, the most important time for you to do the nutrient timing that Jeremy is talking about and not include a starchy carb at night. Yeah. We don't need to carb up to go to bed. We don't need to carb up to sit on the couch and watch TV. (laughs) And it gets out of hand when you're having potato chips and ice cream and things that aren't even part of your dinner that are really high in carbs, high in fat, high in sugar. That's what really can sabotage you. Yeah. Um, C007 says, uh, I work 12 hour shifts. Some days I can't get up and go to the gym before work. Then I work out, um, but then can't sleep. Ms. Christine, um, any suggestions? Do you have any suggestions, Jessica, for sleeping after you're all hyped up from a workout? Oh, yeah. You know, honestly, my recommendation would be make yourself get up and go before work. I think that's going to be like the, the best overall strategy for you. I know it's like hard. You're like, I can't some days. I just can't. But um you know, can or can't, it always comes down to a choice. And like, I know it, it, it sucks to hear that, but it's, it's honestly the truth. If you set your alarm clock a little bit earlier and you put it far away, so you had to get up out of bed, like you could make it happen. And I think that that would be much easier for you than trying to figure out how to get to sleep afterwards. Um, because it's true, uh, workouts do will hype up your energy and you kind of feel like a buzz afterwards. And I've had a lot of my clients can't sleep if they work out late at night. So my recommendation yeah. is always make sure it happens um, before then. But you must not work 12 hour shifts every day, right? This can't be every day of the week. The stress, it's yeah. a badger. Oh, 12 hour days every day. Oh, well. Well, your, your overtime is good then. <laughs> um, but. But uh, at the same time, you know, there are things, too, that I've found because I've had a couple clients complain about that and then come to find out that they were taking like a pre-workout with their PM workout. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, I mean, if you're taking like C4 at eight o'clock at night, of course, you're not going to be able to go to bed two hours later. So, you know, definitely watch um, any sort of stimulants or anything like that, which would go for everyone. I mean, most people aren't going to be drinking a cup of coffee at eight o'clock at night. and so. you know, watch if, if you happen to be taking a pre-workout, stop it, like stop it. And, um, you try that. Maybe it was the, maybe it was the, you know, pre-workout, but I agree with Jessica without a doubt. It's about priorities, getting it in, wake up, wake up earlier and just make it happen. Um, and the, you know, the (laughs) first world problems, that's right. (laughs) That's very right. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, take the, the priority that, you know, you were already having all that energy and that time that you were going to invest in the PM to get your workout in after work instead, you know, get up earlier, get your workout in and then and go, to, go bed to bed earlier. Away. Yeah. yeah. I would do, I would you know, get back as soon as possible. For absolutely. Sure. And it makes that whole cycle so much easier. Yeah. If you and get it, into a rotation where you're going yeah. to bed at a reasonable time, getting your sleep, then you won't have trouble waking up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or whatever you have to wake up at. Yeah. And I don't know if you get a lunch break or not. Like some people are able to squeeze their workout in on their lunch break um, because, you know, it is possible to eat your food in 10 minutes. So if you get an hour break, you could have a 45 minute workout and then, you know, eat for 10 minutes and be able to get back to work. But if that's not realistic for you and your morning is your only option, yeah, then like we said, it kind of just comes down to discipline, motivation. Yeah. Um, when I was uh, losing all of my weight, for those that don't know, I lost a, a decent amount of weight. Um, well, when I was losing all my weight, I uh, <laughs> I didn't have enough time. I was working multiple jobs. I was commuting in Southern California. So I was spending a lot of time in the car just getting to work. <clears throat> and so I could, you know, I could, I could get like these 30 to 35 minute increments a couple times a day, but I wasn't, I didn't have a block in my day where I could like dedicate an hour, an hour and a half. And so I was doing the same thing. I mean, I'd get 60 minutes for lunch and I would, I would scream down the Southern California freeways to the nearest 24 hour fitness. I could get in like, you know, I don't know. It ended up being like 
27 and a half minutes or 32 and a half minutes or whatever it was um, of cardio. I'll drive myself off, get back to work. And then after work, I was able to get in some more minutes at, uh, you know, after work at the gym. And so I split it up. Um, but it, it all has to do with priority and making it a priority and getting it in. I mean, it really is. Um, if you just dedicate yourself, I guarantee Miss Christine that you'll be able to make it happen. Um, Belfair asks if we use any pre-workout and supplements. Um, he's been using BCAAs. Are they worth it? Um, personally, I do take a pre-workout product. Uh, I use Cellucor C4. Um, I love the boost in energy. I love the enhanced blood flow. Um, my pumps are fantastic with it in the gym, and uh, and so that's what I use. And um, you know, BCAAs do have their, you know, scientifically they do have their their spot. Um, I. I really, I don't force my clients to use supplements. I don't, um, I do make recommendations. And uh, as far as an amino acid product, um, uh, Cellucor also makes another one called um, Alpha Amino. And the reason why I like that over some of the other ones is because it also has essential amino acids in it. Um, not just branch chains, but also some essential amino acids. And, and Jessica, you have one as well. We've had this conversation before. So remind us which one you use. Oh, we don't actually like produce one ourselves, but we um, work as an affiliate with MyProtein. Um, they're a company from the UK and they make good supplements and stuff. So we have discount links and everything that we can hook our clients up with discounted items. And I, I'll put the link down here below too, where you can shop our little um, page of like what we recommend and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I don't know if everyone knows this, but I'm pregnant right now. So as I am still working out, I'm not taking any supplements. So no pre-workouts for me, not even caffeine at all other than tea. Like I'll have some green tea and herbal tea sometimes, but it's very minimal. Um, and then what else? Oh yeah. So I'm not taking any BCAAs. I've even stopped taking any like protein supplements. I'm just seriously relying on whole food during this pregnancy. Um, so that answers the question about what I do, but I think, you know, when I am not pregnant and when I'm training and everything, I definitely support the use of BCAAs. I think they're great. I personally haven't noticed like incredible results with or without them. Like I feel like my results are pretty similar with or without so if you can't afford it, then you could skip it. It's not a make or break kind of situation. Um, so yeah, maybe that answers your question of what, whether, whether it's worth it. It's like, mm, if you've got the money, yeah. But <laughs> if yeah. you don't, you may not miss it. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The science is there. I mean, the science is there with the, with the amino acids. So, But I will agree with Jessica. I cannot honestly say that it's like, Oh, if I didn't have my amino acids, I'm just wrecked the next day or my workouts are that much yeah. better. I, you know, I, I cannot honestly say that. Um, and so it, it really is kind of a, I think it helps yeah. with soreness. Like that's what I've noticed in the past is like when I take it, I know I'm noticeably like less sore okay. than I was before. But does that mean I'm like veins popping striated, like crazy rips <laughs> when I'm taking it? No. But um, it also depends how hard you're working and also what you're eating. I think those are the two factors that need to be looked at before even any supplements are considered. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. definitely yeah. your, your nutrition throughout the day should be your number one focus. And assuming that is on point and your nutrition is on point, then start to introduce some supplements to help you get that extra 1% or whatever it might add. Um, you know, and yes. on top of that, like I do recommend like a, a multivitamin, um, you know, even though again, most of your stuff, I would love to be coming from, you know, green fibrous vegetables mm -hmm. and the foods that you're eating, but it's always good to cover your bases just with even a generic one a day multivitamin, in my opinion. Um, wow. you know, I, I personally take like a, a greens, uh, a greens, a powder, um, in my shake in the morning. And, um, and that, you know, that's got tons of proven benefits. I noticed that, um, I noticed that I have more energy when I take it versus when I don't take it, the greens powder, like I, it just, <laughs> maybe it's the, uh, pH properties that I have no idea, but I, I like, I physically feel a difference when I, when I take it. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a weird thing, but even with like fresh juiced vegetables, do you, have you noticed that when I drink like a fresh vegetable juice, I feel it, you almost feel like a coffee buzz. It's a, it's pretty incredible. It's, it's like gotta the, be uh, something to do. 
V8 commercial. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so I just awesome. put the items I dig web page in there below so you guys can take a look at you know all items we recommend at Live Lean TV. My protein is there. We do recommend that people take fish oil. We have the athletic greens like Jeremy's talking about. Um, along with some other items. So you just may want to scan through there and kind of see like what we think is cool or what we think is helpful. Sweet. That's awesome. Um, you know, and going back to our, um, our original topic, uh, you know, one of the things that we discussed was um, maintenance because that's another yeah. question that I get even before somebody gets to their goal. A lot of times it's followed with the question of, well, how do I maintain this after I've gotten there, right? Like, is, is, or am I, am I going to have to work this hard for the rest of my life yes. in order to, you know, in order to get to my goals? And that no, no, the answer is no, you will not have to work that hard. And, right. um, you know, the, the process of getting to our goals is where the big effort is. Once we're there, the maintenance of that is is much easier than you think. And and on our phone call earlier today, Jessica made a great reference, and I'll steal it from you, but I'm giving you credit. Is <laughs> is if you look at a lot of people, you've been at the same weight for a long time, right? We hear this all the time, like, oh, I lost all this weight, or I've been trying for a year to lose the last ten pounds, but my weight has not changed. Yeah. So essentially, you've been maintaining for a year, right? And and so. You're eat, we're, we're in generally in, in generally in general able to easily maintain our weight with some flexibility in our diet, with some flexibility in our training. And yeah. so if you just push forward and, and put in this effort to get the last 10 pounds, you're going to find that your maintenance in that area is much easier than the effort it took to get to that area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our body wants to be in homeostasis. Like that is natural for a human being to get to a weight and stay there. It's only by changes in the environment and changes in the stimulus, that's when you actually see changes in the body happen. But as long as the environment stays the same, you can bet your body's gonna stay the same. So when you create new habits like Jeremy and I teach, um, you know, it's a habit, it's called a habit for a reason because it's something you continuously do, you know, and it's something that you adopt into your life. You don't just do it for six to eight weeks or three months or something and then totally changed back to a bad habit, you know? Yeah. And that would falls right back in line with what we were saying earlier. Identify the things that you're doing in your life that are getting you away from your goals, right? How did you get to this place to begin with? The Maybe it's the partying on the weekends or the making bad decisions when you go out or the late night ice cream and popcorn binges or the whatever. Identify these things because these are what will get you that 10 pounds back. <laughs> if you put in all this effort and get it down and then you just go back to your old lifestyle, you already know where you're going to end up there. And yeah. so with this, uh, with this idea of, of changing some of the things in our life and putting it, uh, putting in the effort to get that last 10 pounds, we do have to have the understanding that we can't just go back to the way that we were living before. Will it be easier than the, the amount of effort we're putting in? Absolutely. But you know, there has to be this balance. You know, maybe the partying isn't all the time. Maybe the ice cream and popcorn is on special occasion, you know, or, or once in a while rather than the nightly thing that you were doing before. And so, but you'll find that you can work in that flexibility in your life, just obviously not at the rate that you were when you gained the 10 pounds to begin with. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And, you know, maintenance mode is a glorious place to be. Like, that's what I hope for everyone because it's just that's where you're relaxed. You don't have any stress, any worry about what's going to happen or, you know, how, like the changes need to be made or anything. You're just happy with your body. You look in the mirror and you say, damn, that looks good, you know, and you just feel confident about yourself. And you also feel proud of yourself that you got there. And then over time, you start to feel proud of yourself that you're able to stay there. So this is my ultimate goal for every client in the end is, is maintenance, you know, it's, it's not always fat loss, you know, it's not always about fat loss. It may be about fat loss at the moment and for a while until you reach it. And then it's just about maintenance. Right. Absolutely. Um, and another thing that I've found too is, is people are so worried about maintenance, but a lot of times the, the confidence and the high that they get from getting to their goal, when they do look at themselves and they're like, Oh my God, I love how I look and I love clothes shopping and I love what I look like in a bathing suit. Um, this, this drives us to create new goals in most cases that I've seen. A lot of people are just like, 
you know, they had this goal of getting to a, a certain look or a certain dress size or a certain whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden they get there and it's like, oh, I want to take it further, you know? And so yeah. they start, cool. you know, they continue, continue that forward moving progress for now a new goal. Um, yeah. And, you know, hey, self-improvement is always a good thing. Um, I know at least in, in, in my journey, there have been periods of times where maintenance was key. I had other stresses going on in my life or other things going on, or I was focusing on building businesses or I, you know, whatever it was. And it was like, for me right now, just keeping a tight physique and holding it down, just holding the fort down, you know, this was, this was, this was good. But then there are other parts of my journey where it has been like an all out war on my goals and I'm pushing yeah. forward 110% and doing whatever it took to get there, you know, training twice a day and waking up early and going to bed late and eating, you know, very, very strict diet. And so um, yeah. there are times where you're going to feel motivated to push forward and give it your all. And then there's other times where, you know, maintenance is key. So absolutely. You know what the other thing is like, if you were to look at weight loss on a graph, it's never linear, right, Jeremy? It's like people think of it as this line that just goes down. And right. it's, not, it's not, that's not the way it is. It's more of like a bell curve. It goes down and then it smooths out, you know? So yeah. I think it's really important to realize that on your weight loss journey that you're going on a slope. You're not going to be losing weight forever because if you got to zero pounds, we would have a problem, you know? Yeah. yeah. I want no. my baby weight. <laughs> <laughs> no. I looked best at eight pounds, six ounces. So, um, nice. Yeah, so I think everyone does need to know what their goal is. Where is the end point? Where is the light at the end of the tunnel? And how long is it going to take to get there? And what kind of work is going to be required? Um, all of those questions are really important to answer, I think, even at the beginning of a journey. Because it's much easier to hike from here to the top of Mount Everest if you know how many miles it is and you know how many days it's going to take. You know, you it's like emotionally easier because you know it's not going to be forever or for the rest of your life. Yeah. And sometimes just focusing on that day too. You know, you yes. know what you need to do that day. Just focus on that day. Don't even worry about the whole mountain. <laughs> Cause sometimes looking at the whole mountain. It's too overwhelming to even think about the whole mountain. So just yeah. one at a time. One step at a time. Absolutely. Um, you guys are great too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, well, there was a point. Crap. Now it lost me. Um, <laughs> I saw your dog has a, uh, a cone on its head. Oh, I know. He's wearing the cone of shame right now. It's so sad. Poor baby. <laughs> Did he get his stitches out? Uh, yeah, he does have his stitches out, and that's the reason why he needs the cone. Oh, he's so sleepy right now. Uh, but just because his eye is so sensitive for a few days that he needs the uh, cone on until yeah. it's all the way better, you know? Um, so oh. he's doing he's doing great, but it's just, like, annoying to wear that cone. <laughs> Um, my, the baby in my belly is a girl. Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, awesome. she's due in August, by the way. Yeah. First kid. Yes. Um, and so I remember what I was going to say now on along the lines of, um, people feeling like their weight loss journey is just going to be this constant slope down. I mean, even tracking results week to week, uh, you know, some weeks are going to be better than others. And, you know, oh, wow. you ask them and they're like, oh, I, I did everything the same. I, my workouts were on point. My food was on point. My water was on point. But, you know, going back to there's all sorts of things out of our control of, you know, yeah. uh, mental and environmental stresses. There's hormones. Yeah. There's, you know, there's all sorts of things that play into our results. And so you may have this fantastic week followed by a week that's like, well, what happened? You know, I like, um, not that you regress, but it, just, it wasn't, it wasn't as good. And then, you know, you're like, a lot of times I'm saying, just stay consistent. Just, just, just trust the system, stay consistent. And then poof, you know, the next seven days it's like, oh wow, there it is. Um, yeah. and so if we, if we are constantly putting our focus on, on the scale or on, you know, whatever, like we have to, trust the system, which goes right back to just hire somebody that knows what they're doing and put your trust and faith in them and let them worry about the results. You just follow the plan. Um, you know, uh, Jessica and I both do um, online coaching. We both have programs that you can buy and run with it. Um, and so, you know, put your trust in something and just give it your all <clears throat> and and just realize that your whole, the whole journey is not going to be this this guaranteed, 
you know, steady slope. One week, you know, your weeks are not going to be exactly the same every single week. Um, but, you know, making sure that you're consistent and following a plan and, and changing it when needed, but you're going to see results. It just takes effort. And so yeah. kind of to, to recap um, the things that we've covered today, I mean, some of our talking points or some of our top level things were changing up your fitness um, if, especially if you've been doing the same thing for a long time, change it up, um, especially the intensity of it. And so switching from, you know, steady state to high intensity or, uh, you know, going from, um, exercises that may only be using your lower body to more circuit style things that are using your whole body. Um, yeah. these things can really make a huge, huge difference in not only your calories burned in the moment, but raising your metabolism for nearly the rest of the day. Um, and, you know, going back to our, our nutrition topics of, first of all, knowledge, knowing what you're taking in. If you're just kind of eating and not really thinking about it or you don't know what you're consuming, start there. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you're currently consuming and what sort of habits are, are causing you to be where you're at right now. Um, and then start to determine what your needs are in order to get to your goals. And, you know, once you once you understand both those, the, the changes that are needed are definitely going to be easier to make. Yeah, and don't be plastic for, about it. That's huge. Don't go on a starvation diet and don't, you know, no. go crazy. Um, start depriving yourself. It's make small strategic changes. Eliminate the things that are holding you back and include the things that are going to push you forward. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so we are definitely not saying to go on the lemon juice diet or the, the <laughs> you know, none of that. Um, we're not starving ourselves. We're still feeding our bodies. Um, yeah. But you know, eating within your means and determining what got you to the, you know, what got you to where you're at in the first place is, uh, is mm -hmm. definitely knowledge that you'll want to gain. Um, and then going along with what we talked about nutrient timing of, um, it won't apply to everybody, but for some people placing your starchy carbs around your fitness in your day or your most active part of the day. And then, you know, kind of looking at your day and as a whole and going, okay, well, the part of the day where I get home from work and I'm sitting down on the couch or I'm whatever, and then going to bed, we don't need to, you know, ingest all of these carbohydrates. We don't need to ingest all of these, you know, things in order to, uh, to go to bed. So, um, right. and it's just a bad else. habit that needs to be broken. It's not like actual hunger. So what I do personally and what I recommend to clients too is brush your teeth after dinner. If you just had a great dinner if you don't want to snag, go brush your teeth and you can still snuggle and watch TV and then go to bed at a reasonable hour. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be um, craving so badly. Like when you have that minty taste in your mouth, I feel like I don't even want a snack because it will ruin that fresh taste. You know? right, right. You're going to ruin my toothbrush taste. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah. Like the last thing you want to do is eat right after that and have to brush again. So <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So that really um, works for sure. Do we have any questions? We, we'll take some some questions at this point. Oh, what was my motivator to finally take a hundred pounds off? Um, ah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I've been married for uh, a long, long time. Um, going on, I got married when I was nineteen, wow. and um, we are going on sixteen years now. And so, um, so it wasn't really love life. I mean, she's loved me and stuck with me through being chubby and then being very, very fat. And, um, but you know what, it was, it was really kind of waking up one day and realizing that I was, I was better than the way that I was treating me. Um, so whether you want to call it self-respect or whatever, you know, I woke up and just realized like, holy crap, like you are better than this. Um, several eating disorders, smoking two packs a day, drinking most nights of the week. I mean, I was a train wreck, a train wreck. And um, <laughs> you got it together now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so um, I, I, I just, it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I, I'm better than this. And um, the next mantra. day, yeah, yeah. And the next day I went and joined at a, a 24 hour fitness in Lancaster, California. It's where we were living at the time. And mm -hmm. um, I never looked back. I, you know, I, I didn't know anything at the time and, but I knew that I couldn't eat whatever I wanted and drink a 12 pack of Mountain Dew a day. And, you know, I knew I had to get more active and start cutting out some of the obvious things. So sugar is where I started and 
and doing a little bit of cardio. And then once I, once I lifted my first weight, then I just got addicted to, uh, to bodybuilding and, and so, yeah, yeah. Setting my goals from there. So anyway, that's a, a long explanation, Belfair, but, um, essentially, you know, realizing that I was better than the way that I was living. Um, and obviously once then I, once I started, then there was other things that kept me motivated, tracking my progress, you know, doing progress photos and putting them side by side to see the physical effects of like, wow, look at me, I'm changing. Um, yeah. You know, I've always been very good at imagining what I wanted. You know, I, I would sit and, and kind of paint that picture of what I was going for. What did I want to look like? What, how did I envision I would feel, you know? Um, and so that definitely helped kind of push me down the road too of having a vision of where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a really important topic for losing the last 10 pounds that we didn't even talk about is envision yourself without that last 10 pounds. What would it look like? What would it feel like? I just think that's so essential for changing yeah. your body shape too is if you can't even imagine it in your head, it's really hard to get there physically. It all kind of starts with your mind first. So believing that it's even possible for you is a really, really big step. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, it's a... Uh... Sometimes people have a hard time, especially if they've never been to that goal weight. If you've never reached that that goal weight where you're in love with your body and the confidence is there and all this stuff, some people have a really hard time imagining what that's like. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll tell them, okay, well, <clears throat> maybe right now you can't imagine what it's like for you, but let's start here. We've all seen a movie where the – smoking hot Hollywood actor is getting out of the pool dripping wet and they're perfect and they're <laughs> like everything is the planets are aligned and the music's going and they're like look at the confidence and the just bubble of awesome that's surrounding yeah. this person you can essentially see what it's like when you are in a place in your life where you are totally confident in your own skin you're comfortable yeah. with your body and Things open up that you never, like I hated clothes shopping, hated it for 20 some years of my life, hated clothes shopping because I was always buying bigger clothes. Always. Every time I went, it was to get bigger wow. clothes. Wow. And it was, that was a huge thing to me when I finally made this transition over to really being comfortable with body and actually loving the way I looked because then I loved clothes shopping and I was buying more clothes than my wife was. Because I was like, I was like, look how good I look in this shirt, you know? And so, yeah. and, and so it's, it's one of those things where all of a sudden that the doors open up in many other areas of your life with this, this confidence and these things that, you know, you used to, used to be a burden before, but now it's a really, really good thing. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people get very nervous when going to the beach or a swimming pool because... Right. It's the one time where, you know, we're seen in the least amount of clothes by the general public. And um, and if you could imagine being comfortable going into that environment and wanting to go into that environment, almost showing off in that environment, yeah. it's like huge difference from from the mental mindset that we've had for a very, very long time of being self-conscious and being yeah. afraid and scared and uncomfortable and the longer you wait, like you said, for you is 20 years. Like that's a lot harder to change than if you only felt like that for five years, you know? So for anybody out there that's listening to this and you've been unhappy with your body for five years, now is a great time. You'll be way ahead of where Jeremy started, you know? So don't oh, wait until it's been 20 years, you know? Like they always say, um, the best time to start is 20 years ago, but the second best time is today. So take advantage of the opportunity you have to start right now. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, Geek Week took you two years to lose two, two pounds, took my, two, 20, 20 pounds, pounds, 20 pounds. Um, that's actually a decent rate. I mean, some people would think that that's really slow, but that's, I mean, 20 pounds is a lot of weight. So, you know, that's a decent rate. And what's good about that is that you probably did it in a much more sustainable way. You didn't have to kill yourself or starve yourself to get it, you know? Yeah. That's not a bad yeah. thing. Any progress is, is, you know, any forward moving progress is, is good progress in my, in my opinion, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, especially, none. <laughs> right. You know, most people want to lose 20 pounds in a week. 
Um, but the reality is if you're doing that, it's very, very bad for your body. Um, and so, you know, the slower that you lose it, I mean, there, there obviously there's a threshold there, but the slower you use it, um, is always better because it's going to keep your metabolism higher. Um, you know, things like loose skin. I mean, you know, I losing over a hundred pounds, uh, it's, it's different than just losing 10 pounds, but, um, you know, the slower you use it, the, the more chance you're giving your skin to, you know, go back with your body. And, and so there's tons of benefits for, um, losing weight slower and more sustainable. Um, there's also tons of, um, studies on the rebound rate for people that lost the weight faster. I mean, essentially the faster you lose it, the higher percentage chance you have of gaining it back. And there's many reasons for this. One is, um, the more of a de deficit you're putting on your body, the more your metabolism is going to take a hit. And most people do not make the lifestyle changes that we're talking about in this lab. They, they have this mentality of just hitting it really hard for eight weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks. And then going back to the same way that they were living that got them the 10 or 20 pounds to begin with, but now with a slower metabolism than the, the than what they started with. And so the weight comes piling back on, um, you know, and then there's, there's the mental, mental aspects of losing it too fast. And, um, it's yeah. just the slower, you, the slower you lose it, the better, um, on many fronts. So. Yeah, it really is true. So don't be in a rush, you guys. Drinking Talk water. about the role of drinking water in weight loss. Oh, yeah. Instead of saying drink as much as possible, I'm sure so many fitness experts say that. And, of course, that is not concrete enough to actually make you take action. So what I usually tell clients is, like, depending on your body size, I want you drinking three to four liters a day. So someone like me, female, my size, I would be drinking three. I would have Jeremy drinking four. So, and if you're, you know, really massive, go for five, but I want none of, nobody, I don't think should be drinking less than three liters. That's just my opinion. Yep. I completely agree. And I, <laughs> I, we agree on a lot of different things, but that's in my nutrition guides right now for everyone, awesome. three to four liters of water a day. It's so funny. Like, and you guys know, Jeremy and I haven't even known each other that long. We met like maybe two yeah. months ago. Right. And yeah. it's just, and we've, and we've only known each other digitally we've never met in yeah, person either that's <laughs> so. true. we both live in california we like have never actually met but it yeah. seems like our brains are like the same we're like clones. well yeah i mean and that was one of the reasons why i contacted you to do these blabs to begin yeah. with is because i had watched yours with hannah and i was yeah. like yes i completely agree with her yes that's what i preach as well oh, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it so seems funny. like every single every single blab we're not stepping on each other's toes we're agreeing with ex everything that we're saying so I it know. works yeah cool um so hopefully that answers so your question about the water like if you tell us your body size we'll be able to give you like the number but you can bet it's going to be at least three liters yeah um and um C007, I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. Christine, Miss Christine, um, I'm going to paste in a link to my um, Facebook page. And every blab, because you said this is your first blab, but you love us. Um, every blab that Jessica and I do, I create an event on my Facebook page. Yeah. She's tagged in it. Um, and so if you want to know when our next one is, <clears throat> unfortunately, we have not had a date where it's like the same day and time. We've kind of worked it into our schedules. We're both busy. We both have other blabs that we do. And so it's it's one of the things where Jessica and I, Jessica and I kind of pick a, a day and time slot that works. Um, but go to my page. Um, you'll be able to find her page from there, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, and there's yeah. hers. And so you'll be able to find our next blab um, by going to our Facebook pages. Um, we also post it on Twitter. And so you can, you'll find it. Um, but we love that you're here and we'd love to see you again in the future. Yeah. And um, you guys, we're both very active on Twitter, Facebook. I, you have Instagram too, right? I don't think yep. I followed there yet. But you should follow us everywhere that you know that you like to hang out, like any social media sites that you like. We're probably on it. Like I'm on Snapchat. Are you on Snapchat, Jeremy? Yes, I am. I follow oh, you. Snapchat names. <laughs> <laughs> There's my Snapchat. Um, yeah. uh, my Instagram's in there. Facebook's in there. Twitter nice. is on here. So yeah, follow us everywhere. And and what's yeah. cool too that I've noticed is, yeah. and we both do this, is that we kind of post different aspects of our life 
on the different social medias. So it's like, if you follow me on Instagram or you follow me on Snapchat or you follow me on Facebook, you're getting, you're getting a wide variety of Jeremy Reed and Jessica. So, um, it's not so yeah, fitness, but some of our personal life too, which I think some, like people always tell me they like to see that too, because they like to see that we're real people. We have real struggles. We have, you know, family stuff going on at the same time as maintaining everything that we do with fitness. So hopefully that you guys will like that. Oh, didn't yeah. I, I did my Facebook link wrong? Just a sec. Um, but yeah, and you guys can let us know what your you know social media accounts. If you guys have any fitness related stuff, you want us to take a look at. Yeah, and and also topics for future blabs is a good thing too. Um, you know, hit uh, Jessica or myself up on Facebook and let us know. You know, if if let us know what a, a future topic that you would watch or that you would that you're interested in, and you know, we'll throw it into the mix. So, and we also love your questions. So make sure when you come in the future, you're bringing you know you're bringing your questions, and we'll uh, make some time for some Q and A. But uh, it is now officially after uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, so we are going to wrap this up. Um, thank you guys so much for being here, Jessica. Pleasure as always. Yeah, thank you so much. This was a good one, and I think um, you know. Hopefully, the audience enjoyed, and it's a lot of information to absorb. But hopefully, you guys will take concrete action on the tips that we've given today, and uh, reach that goal body and get to that maintenance mode where we want you to be. Absolutely. All right. Have a great night, guys. And uh, Jessica, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Or next time. <laughs> <laughs>